Right people, we are back again this afternoon and today's solution uh, is going to be a top rack for the road trip. Now as you know, that will be the seat or the cowl that goes on there. Uh, Hayabusa, um, well certain companies do uh, luggage solutions for this, so uh, Hepco Becker does one. Um, but it's a rack that bolts into here. I think and comes around this way and you have to put the the top box on the back um, which is fine I suppose if that's what you're after and um, who else uh, there was also another company whose name uh, has slipped my mind that do something similar and uh, you're talking roughly the better side of 200 pounds and uh, when I went on uh, Brexit 4 uh, to Italy I had the S1000R and uh, Hepco Becker had a plate that went straight onto the back pillion seat, which was brilliant. And I'll be looking for the same kind of thing because that way the the weight is on the back seat; it's not hanging over the back of the bike. Uh, even though you know, um, I think if you look up, uh, if you look up there, those are luggage racks for the Gen Two Hayabusa. Um, and I didn't really notice much of uh, a difference in the handling on the Gen Two. But, you know, I was still getting used to the bike and I was still, you know, building building experience. But what I did like was the solution that Hepco Becker came up with for the 1000R. So what I thought was, let me try and get another plate. And I've had a look and they don't do anything. But what I want to try and do in this video is um, modify the S1000R plate that I've got for Hepco Becker and make it fit here. So that's the that's the task for today. Now, uh, just to give you an idea, what I'm looking to do is locate uh, the, the front support under there and pop the back piece into there. Okay, now this is solid because that is the solid subframe metal that's not going anywhere. And that's bolted straight in to, I'm not sure if you can see it there, that's bolted straight in to that subframe. So that's absolutely solid, right? And then uh, this locking mechanism um, is fairly robust as well. And um, if you look at uh, the, the underside of the seat and the cowl, this is all the same from Gen 1, Gen 2 and Gen 3. That part hasn't changed. You know, the, the dimensions and the offsets haven't changed. The, uh, the diameters and all of this kind of stuff is exactly the same. So what I'm proposing to do is take uh, the underside of this from the seat off from a Gen 1 seat, which I've already bought, and uh, connect it to this plate here. So let me show you. That's the Hepco Becker plate. Let me get this out of the way. That's the Hepco Becker plate. And as you can see, they've already pre-drilled it for all of the stuff that they have. And this was specifically for the S1000R, which is why it's got the cut cutouts here. And they allow you to put a factory lock into that. And then, you know, it just drops into the seat um, uh, uh, where the seat would be and you lock it in place. Right. So I've taken all of that off and this is what you're left with. So that bracket is for the S1000R and it's not wide enough. So that is 14 centimetres. Right. And on the booster, the width is 18 centimetres. So I'm going to have to, there's no way I can dock to this. I'm going to have to take this off. And that's why this comes in place. This is going to be the replacement bracket for this here. Okay, so I'll take that off. And what I've done here is uh, taken a, a piece of scrap metal that I had, uh, which was 30 something centimeters, and I've trimmed it down to 28.2 centimeters. Now why 28.2 centimeters? Because what I need is uh, an 18 centimeter run which is from there to there, all right? And I'm gonna fold these over to 90 degrees, which will give me that fold there, okay? And I'll do that on that side, and that will give me a run that is from there to there of 18 centimeters. Then this is the center part from here. That's the center part for these two holes. So if I turn this around, into there so once i've drilled those i'll be able to bolt it straight onto the existing unit i won't need to drill any additional holes and i'm not really a fan of doing that i'd much rather not if i don't have to right and uh once that's done then that will leave me with 
um, 5.1 centimeters uh, of clearance here or length here which is what I need and which is what I've estimated the uh, well not estimated worked out the length of that leg to be that leg and the length that it needs to be so it can the base plate can sit on here it will run flush across there but yet it is long enough to go into here and cl uh, clip into there now at this moment in time i've not notched out any uh any holes but i've got the plans drawn out once i've folded this up that will give me um five centimeters of uh, metal to work with i need to come up one centimeter and allow a leg uh, you know a little uh, what do they call it a, a lug um, and then i can cut out or notch out just a small piece from here to allow the plate this plate to slot in to the bracket support that is on the bike because you can see they're only very thin right very very thin I'm not sure if you can see it in there it's not massive there you go that's how thick it is so i don't need to chop off massive massive pieces so that's going to be the plan now once that's located right and i've managed to secure the plate at the front then the challenge is to work out the back uh, which I've done to a degree already and uh, I'll show you that when I get to that stage all right so when you're DIYing these things at home you don't necessarily have all the equipment and the kit unfortunately I've got one of these vices that my father rest his soul Allahu uh, had um, so what I've done is you can see I've grazed it here cut a little notch in there to make the bend easier and then I've gripped it in the vise at that point here and now I'm just going to smack it with my hammer and bend it over to 90 degrees and that will give me the bend that I need and it'll still be strong because I'm not cut all the way through I've got a welder but I'm no good at welding so this is the line that I've gone down I'll show you what it looks like when it's done okay so that's what you end up with once you've drilled the holes and that was a bloody bore lake let me tell you I had to go to mains power and use that step pit drill I'm not sure if you can see it I'm just one smaller version of this to get it through but bloody hell that's hard work but it's through now uh, the holes line up as well which is exactly what I'm after so now I'm going to mount it and see how it fits to the underside and then once I've got it mounted to the underside, I can work out exactly where I need to notch on this part here in order to, for it to slip into the side or the undercarriage of the motorbike, uh, you know, the seat pillion area into those little hooks that I showed you. I know I've already measured it, it's roughly about a centimetre, but you know what they say, measure twice, thrice, cut once. So back soon. Okay, so this is the rear seat of the Gen 1 actually, uh, Hayabusa, as you can see I've already taken off that nut and bolt, so there's not much in it, because I think it just threads straight into the plastic, but I want to take this off and attach it to the underside of the uh, Hepcor Becker plate, uh, mocking it up, that's what it will look like. Which isn't too bad and then on top of this I'll put my give you rack bolt my give you rack in to this base plate and Janet's your auntie as they say now I just need to work out where that hep called Becker plate uh, sorry where that uh, lock is going to position it's gonna be somewhere around here I'm not sure if you can see the inside of that there that's the locking mechanism so it's gonna fit somewhere around here there's lots of holes here so I'm hoping it's not going to be too much of a problem I'm really hoping that that thread doesn't come here um, because if it does then I'm gonna have to think of another way of mounting it and doing something about it but yeah the front you can see it's got some clothes because this came with some spacers 
that I was able, you know, the original plate that I bought for the S1000R came with some spaces that I was able to use. I'm not sure whether or not you can see underneath. There you go, there are the spaces. There. Right, and this is just kind of loosely uh, put together. So what I've had to do, actually let me take it off and show you. to put something like that together now the top hole uh, or the top slot is for the cowl there the black cowl that one there and the bottom one is for it to locate into those lugs yeah that I showed you before one on that side and one on that side so essentially what happens is the bottom locates and secures into the lugs and the top is the clearance for the cow so the cow doesn't get damaged and the purpose of this is to stop the front end from coming up and um, you know the, the front part of the plate from pulling back and it does that because it's got lots of metal underneath it on both sides and those are welded onto the frame so they're pretty strong i don't think that they're going to go anywhere and uh, then the security not the security what's it called the uh, the latch plate will lock will connect it connect into there and i just need to find and locate it under there from my measurements it's roughly 14 centimeters from what i can remember that is from the end of this pace uh, this plate here to the top of the locking mechanism i'll mock it up i'll put it in and i'll see how it fits and then uh keep you guys up updated let's crack on with it folks Okay people, update time. So I managed to figure it all out. Uh, this will end up uh, obviously upside down like that. So that hole that I've drawed there. Actually let me show you. Flip it around. And that's what it looks like. And this plate will come on there like that. Yep. So I've got a bit of double sided tape. So that's how it's going to fit. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of an issue because this hole I've had to drill into the plate is incredibly close to this one, right? And close to that one. As mentioned, this plate's for an S1000R BMW, not for a Hayabusa. So um, that was okay drilling because there's nothing there. So there's plenty of strength in that. But here, you know, that worries me a little bit because there's only a little bit of material between or metal between that hole and that hole uh, more so between that one and that one but still not much uh, once it's torqued down i'm sure it will be fine um, but what i'm going to do just gold belt and braces is I was, i've got this line about an old piece of steel and uh, as you can see it's already got a couple of holes in there so i've just punched these in and i'm going to drill through these now and i'm going to place that plate over this hole here so it's going to cover that and then I'm going to bolt it in, bolt it in, right? And, well, I don't need really two bolts, but I'll bolt it in. And then once I've done that, then that will, will be the secure uh, plate for that. This will rest on top of that. And then I've got these long screws to feed through the bottom, through the metal plate, uh, the hip core becker plate, through that support plate, and then into this bracket. And then that should be as safe as houses. I've mocked it all up. I've dry fitted it on the bike and it fits an absolute treat. Uh, and I've got clearance as well. Uh, just enough clearance from the overhang. Because um, you can see this tapers down to let the, you know, all the, all, the, all, the, all the fluids or whatever else, liquids from the rain and all the rest of it, uh, drip off the side of the bike and not into the actual bike itself. So I've got literally probably about 10 mil clearance all the way around, which is absolutely brilliant. It's not rubbing on anything. It's not chafing on anything. Um, it's just clear, which is great. And it's secure. So as mentioned, you know, the front parts, that's the clearance for uh, the fairing. That's the lug. Sorry, that's the, the, the recess that goes into the lug. Uh, and then once it's on the lug, it's absolutely solid and tight. And once that's torqued down, um, it's going to be rock solid. And then on top of that, I'll put the... The, the, the you know the the, the, the base plate uh, for the Givy, but that's a separate video. Um, so so far it's coming along really well. It's taken me all bloody day, but it's coming along really well. Um, update to follow once I've got it all 
tightened up, put together, and on the bike, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, folks, there it is. Hepcol Becker modified, adjusted, and base plate solidly on for a Suzuki Hayabusa Gen 3. You can see some of the alterations that have been made, right? Some of the markings that I've done. That's um, old. All of these markings are old. And they're from um, the, you know, the uh, the base plate that I put on for the XR, not the XR, the 1000R, um, which will help me no end because all I'll have to do is just put that back on again and um, mount it, which will be a fairly straightforward process. But those were the holes that I had to drill. So you can see here now, um, that hole that was there, I've filled in. I've put a solid plate in, steel plate, a few mil thick. And I've drilled through that, secured it through there. And at this end, it's, you know, remember the uh, the hole that I had to drill that was close to that and close to that in the middle in between. So it uh, essentially acts as a, a, a reinforcement for that. Um, because all the pressure is uh, on here, it locks in solid and tight uh, into the latch into the locking mechanism and let me show you around the underneath so you can see how much space there is oh i'm not sure if you can see it yet um you can't really tell here but there you go oh is that doing a job there you go okay so that's the front um and that carries all the way around uh, as you can see there's a few good few mil gap um and also at the front as well. I'll try and show you that. So that's the bracket that I engineered. You can see the recess on that side. I'm not sure if you can see the recess on the other side. It clears the top of that cowl and it locates into uh, the two hooks that are attached to the frame, metal hooks that are attached to the frame uh, underneath, uh, which is brilliant get that out of the way sorry which is brilliant um i think i might change those bolts because there's a lot of pressure on them they're not uh what's it called particularly long and it's only about a thread or so i managed to torque it up as much as i could but i've got this niggly feeling in the back of my mind that if too much pressure comes on the whole nut would just pop um and then you know you screwy dude um so you can see all the way around oh focus there you go you can see all the way around it's not catching anywhere on the fairing on this side similarly on the other side as well um, you can see around the back see around this end and you know that is ideal as far as I'm concerned and now on the top of this as mentioned I'll be able to put that my trusty v47 mono key give top box and i've got a hard luggage solution on top of the rear end or rear seat and the great thing about this is uh well when i stop wherever i need to stop i don't need to set my top box off just take my bag out leave the top box on because it's secured to the base and this is literally now that i've done all the hard work it literally just pops off oh let me pull it off stand by let me pull it off i've only got one end so then it just lifts off like that take it out and nothing else changes underneath all you need to do is put either your cowl back on or your receipt back on and jobs a fish there you go and it locks into that okay so let me show you what it looks like from the bottom so this is how i've done it you know i showed you that piece earlier on i think i might just notch out uh, the bottom side that part a little bit more just to give myself um, a bit more space and to make this part um slot in a little bit easier because at the moment you have to really push it forward a bit 
So in order to give myself a little bit of room at the back, if I notch this section out a little bit more, um, there you go. if I notch that section out a little bit more, then um, it will just slide forward a little easier. All right, so I might do that. Um, those spacers came with the original bracket, which was that one there, from Hep Colbecker. And they've worked a treat, as you can see at the bottom of them. I've put spring washers and just a normal washer to spread the load and to give some resistance. But as mentioned, you know, that's the original uh, bolt that came with the kit. And I feel like there's just a lot of pressure and tension on those. So I'm not overly confident about these. I'm going to probably get these replaced um, at some point next week. Well, certainly before I go. And then towards the back end, this was the latch mechanism that I got from the Gen 1 seat. 13 quid I paid for that. And um, incidentally, there's the seat that it's come off. Now, I've done another video on the 1000R where people generally just tend to you know, draw through the seat and put it into there, but it's not worth even considering that because these are so flimsy. Right, they'll, they'll just snap off with the weight of what you've, whatever you've got in your top box. So I've got this here now, and um, I've got that plate there. I've had to make up the distance. I mean, you could I could have used some tube, but I've ended up using a big bolt or a big nut. Sorry, fed it through the nut. It acts as the same as a similar similar to a tube on that side, and on this side. Uh, here, I'm not going to worry too much about that because focus uh, because that runs a little bit clear, and that is that bolt there, and that secures this plate. Okay, so this plate is secured by that big, that big straight head, and that little nut at the top there, on there, and then this one is the top one it secures the top end of the, the plate and the plate's solid it's not going in anywhere at all absolutely solid and that is again a straight head there which i've spread the load across with a washer and underneath i've put a spring washer and washer and torqued it up nice and tight so that i'm happy with that's not going to go anywhere and that's pretty solid um that's solid as well but uh, i'm just gonna change the screws to give myself just peace of mind and then the base plate boom fixed straight onto it it's on the top box at the moment yeah it's on the top box so i've already got the screws and the plates and all of that for that i'm just gonna uh, fit it straight onto there and then the job is done and that's it folks so it's taken a whole bloody day all of these things uh tinkering and tweaking and fiddling about and trying to work it out as you go along but essentially it's possible so if you're after a hard luggage option for your suzuki hayabusa gen 3 and you don't want a rack that feeds into this part into these lugs here and carries over the back because the other one just sits at the back there which i suppose is fine if you've got you know two up but i haven't it's just me on this next road trip um and it always has been to be honest with you since we started but it's, it's just me and i don't necessarily want you know um, the overhang i wasn't bothered about it until i had it on the thousand uh, r because up until the thousand r everything was hanging over the back Right, the uh, K1200, first gen Hayabusa, second gen Hayabusa, everything was just hanging over the back, didn't bother me. Until I got the Hepco Becker plate on the 1000R. And when I got it on the 1000R, I thought, bloody hell, this feels so much better. It's almost like you've got, you know, a small, small, small pillion on the back, 20kg pillion on the back. Right, you haven't got that weight worrying about, having to worry about the, the weight hanging over the back of the bike. So I thought, right, let me try that again. And... Um, that's what I've done. So, God willing, it will all be sorted and focused, um, solid and secure, and it will give me, um, you know, the, the kind of solution that I need uh, for my luggage options, keep my bike uh, stable as well, and fundamentally keep my sugar honey iced tea secure. There you go. That's brilliant. I mean, I've had that since uh, probably the second Brexit or first Brexit um absolutely love it and i wouldn't do a brexit without it to be honest with you 
they're absolutely brilliant. I've carried so much crap in that, but this year I'm going to travel light. So that's it, folks. Um, any questions, let me know. Ride safe.